Now, page two of the style sheet or style tip sheet is an entirely different kind of project. On page two, what I'm trying to do is two things. One, provide sort of a checklist for you of grammar and technical and mechanical issues that you can run through as you proofread and edit your paper. But the other thing I'm trying to do is to create kind of a scoring guide for me. So the codes on this page are the ones that I will use to mark your paper to identify errors or things that you need to work on. So just to give you an example of the, how that would work, let's imagine I found a fragment in your paper. I would identify that as S, because that's a sentence structure error, 3. And when I identified it in your paper, I wouldn't type explain what it was. I just at the end of the sentence or paragraph type S3, and you'd have to go back into the sentence or the paragraph and to find the fragment. The idea of doing it this way is it challenges you to learn the concept and find the error to some degree on your own. First paper, I usually put the error notations at the end of each sentence. And then the second paper, I move them to the end of each paragraph. And on the third paper, I put them at the end of the paper and you got to go back and find them. So the idea is you're going to get better and better at finding and fixing these things. So the first category is sentence structure. They're the most serious ones. There's though they're errors that can very seriously lower your grade, even if there's just a few of them, because they're, they're fundamental misunderstandings of sentence structure and they should have been addressed in your 100 level comp course. So problems in this S area are pretty serious and will highly affect your grade. The P area is sort of a different deal. Punctuation errors are not usually the end of the world unless they somehow create sentence structure errors or are connected to those. So having a comma in the wrong place or missing a comma not so much of a big deal. Uh, colons, semicolons, confusing those two early on in the course, not the end of the world. By the end of the course, very important. Now, of course, when I say individual punctuation errors are not a problem, that's true. But if you commit the same error over and over and over again in the paper, if there are 10 different comma errors in your paper, or if every time you use a semicolon or colon, you use it incorrectly, then we are talking about something that will influence your grade. We are talking about something that's going to be a priority to work on and fix together. If we scroll down this page a little bit, we'll see over here there's a checklist of MLA formatting issues. That's really productive when you're going to do your final version of your paper after you've done all your revision, your proofreading and editing. You're saying, okay, do I have all the MLA requirements? You'll notice over here on the left side, there's a section about agreement issues. And after sentence level errors, agreement issues are the next major really important concern. And we want to make sure that we are looking carefully at our verbs and our pronouns. And that's what agreement errors are always about. They're about verbs or they're about pronouns. Um, and you can review those and we can talk about them more as the course goes. A lot of this should have been sorted out in your English 100 course. If it hasn't been, you got to reach out to me and we'll work together to fix them. But we won't spend a lot of class time reviewing grammar issues. We'll talk about a few things here or there. But mostly what we want to focus on in class is what's over here, style. And you can see there's a section here on concision. And we're going to be learning more about concision and working more with it uh, as the course goes on. There's a section here about active verbs. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see another section on sentence variety, which is really covered by the first page. Uh, first side of the style tips page. Now, there are a couple areas you can't see on the screen here. Uh, the big one that I want you to look at is if you look at your actual sheet, you'll see one more category. It's labeled, la labeled W for word level errors. And that's an important list of uh, common errors that are done on the level of the, the word itself. So moving from the sentence, moving from the relationship between verbs and subjects, from the relationship between pronouns and subjects and their antecedents to the word level. And that's where we're going to see things like capitalization errors, spelling errors, using the incorrect word, leaving out words, 
not using the right article or leaving it out, not matching a noun to its proper number, using an incorrect preposition, not using proper comparative language, working incorrectly with numbers. These are all little kind of things that, again, they occur occasionally, not a big deal, but patterns or repeated errors, they become a big deal. The point of this quick video is to show you that this is a really valuable tool, both when you're proofreading and editing your work before you turn it in, and then after when you get it back to help you see the patterns and to see the connections. And what you'll notice is for each term or idea here, you're given uh, an example of what that looks like. So for example, you see here dangling modifier. There's an example of a sentence with uh, that has the error, and then there's an example of the corrected sentence. Uh, and so for a lot of these bigger problems, you'll get examples. Uh, for some of the other issues, you'll just get a quick definition. This is not meant to teach you something you don't understand. This sheet is to make to help you remember something you've already learned. If there's something on here that you haven't already learned and you're having trouble with it, chances are good that you're going to have to spend some extra time with me or find YouTube pages, I mean, YouTube videos or web pages that review this material. And I have those resources for you and we'll pass them along after we see what your grammar looks like when you submit your first paper. Okay, hope this little summary of page two has been helpful. See ya.